So you want to be a dermatologist. You like the idea of treating nails, hair, and the largest human organ, the skin. Let's debunk the public perception myths of what it means to be a dermatologist and give it to you straight. This is the reality of dermatology. Dr. Jubal, MedSchoolInsiders.com Welcome to our next installment in So You Want To Be. In this series, we highlight a specific specialty within medicine, such as dermatology, and help you decide if it's a good fit for you. You can find the other specialties on our So You Want To Be playlist. A lot of you asked for dermatology, so that's what we're covering here. If you want to vote in upcoming polls to decide what future specialties we cover, make sure that you are subscribed. If you'd like to see what being a dermatologist looks like, check out my second channel, Kevin Jubal MD, where I do a second series in parallel called A Day in the Life. Once the world is back to a more normal baseline, we'll be doing a day in the life of a dermatologist. Dermatology is the specialty that manages diseases of the skin, hair, and nails, and involves both medical and procedural aspects. Skin may seem relatively straightforward, but it's far more complicated than that. A dermatologist can identify and treat more than 3,000 conditions, including eczema, psoriasis, and skin cancer, among others. You can think of dermatology as falling within four main categories. Medical dermatology deals with the general and common dermatologic concerns, such as skin cancer, viral warts, acne, rosacea, hair loss, and rashes. This also includes some procedures such as injections, skin biopsies, and excisions. General dermatology is very predictable, with fast-paced office visits, but also longitudinal continuity with your patients. At academic institutions, you can expect to manage more complex skin diseases as well. It's much more than just acne though. The conditions they treat are wide-ranging, such as inflammatory skin conditions, psoriasis, eczema, ulcerative skin conditions, and blistering skin conditions that may require systemic medications or chronic management. Aesthetic dermatology primarily deals with cosmetic concerns such as ridids and wrinkles, volume loss, hyperpigmentation, textural changes, scar revisions, and redness all through cosmetic procedures and laser technologies. This is also clinic-based with in-office procedures. Procedures include blepharoplasties to fix droopy eyelids, rididectomies, also known as facelifts, fat transplantation, laser resurfacing, chemical resurfacing, microdermabrasion, collagen fillers, Botox, sclerotherapy, and scar revision. Surgical dermatology focuses on Mohs micrographic surgery, which is a precise surgical technique used to treat skin cancer. Most surgeons don't just do Mohs surgery though. They often overlap with simple excisions, as you would do in general dermatology, as well as cosmetic dermatology procedures. While this is as surgical as dermatology gets, understand that these are still clinic-based in-office procedures. This does not happen in the operating room. Patients generally only need local anesthesia. You're also more likely to have repeat customers. Not only do these patients need follow-up for monitoring recurrence in their excised skin cancer, but once you get skin cancer, you're also at a higher risk of getting another. Inpatient dermatologists work as a consult to primary services in the hospital, such as internal medicine, pediatrics, or surgery, who are managing hospitalized patients with dermatologic conditions. These dermatologists work in other capacities and have their own clinical practices, but they can be on call for the hospital. There is a short list of dermatologic emergencies, and while there aren't many, these are the dermatologists who would be providing recommendations to the managing service. Patients in this category can be very sick and develop skin disease concurrently, or alternatively, the skin disease can be a systemic disease manifestation, telling a story of what other disease processes are occurring under the surface. After finishing medical school, you'll complete a one-year prelim year or transitional year. This first year is called your intern year. After that, dermatology residency is three years. There are a few combined internal medicine dermatology five-year programs, but there are only a few in the entire country. The one plus three model is much more typical. In terms of competitiveness, dermatology is consistently the first or second most competitive specialty in medicine, switching off with plastic surgery depending on the year. The average step one score is 249, and the average step two CK score is 256. Approximately half of practicing dermatologists are female, and about two-thirds of dermatology trainees are women. Dermatology residency is more cush than most, and you'll on average be enjoying fewer and more predictable hours than even your non-surgical colleagues. There are a handful of fellowships to choose from after residency, each lasting between one and two years. Most surgery requires a one to two year fellowship. 
The joke is that these people wanted to become surgeons, but also wanted a good schedule and lifestyle. Compared to other dermatologists, the stereotype is that they may have a lower tolerance for mistakes, work at a fast pace, and tend to be perfectionists. This is the specialty for those dermatologists who enjoy working with their hands and the process of spending years fine-tuning a nuanced technique. Cosmetic dermatology is a one-year fellowship. You're more likely to be doing private practice, and to be successful here, you should have an entrepreneurial inkling. If you love children and want to work with kids, but also love skin, then pediatric dermatology is a good fit for you. Peds Derm is a one or two year fellowship for those who want to work with the pediatric population exclusively. While generally clinic based, this may require visits to the operating room, usually at academic institutions, as kids sometimes require sedation to tolerate procedures. Dermatopathology is a one or two year fellowship after completing either a pathology or dermatology residency. You may choose to be focused exclusively on dermatopathology, or you may choose to have a few days of clinic. This is ideal for those who are highly visual, love recognizing patterns, and love histology. Plus, it offers a highly predictable schedule, as you're looking through a microscope for most of the day. There is a lot to love about dermatology, and it attracts a large number of medical students. It's no surprise that it's one of the most competitive specialties. In a recent Medscape Lifestyle, Happiness, and Burnout report, dermatology ranked first in terms of happiness compared to other specialties. Dermatology is a highly visual field with high clinic volume that's relatively fast-paced compared to other specialties. It's also a field that allows for both medical aspects and procedural aspects, which is appealing to someone who desires continuity with patients in addition to performing detail-oriented procedures. You may not fully appreciate this now if you're early on in training, but dermatologists also spend less time than the average physician on paperwork and administration. That is a huge deal. And if you appreciate beauty in your work, in a visual way, cosmetic dermatology is an attractive option, no pun intended. One of the strongest draws is the excellent lifestyle and work-life balance that isn't afforded by most other disciplines within medicine. Given the outpatient nature, low acuity of medical conditions, limited call, and flexible workdays, dermatologists generally have more control over how they work. It also doesn't hurt that dermatologists are highly compensated, usually ranking in the top 5 highest paid specialties in medicine, on average over $400,000 per year. But dermatology isn't perfect. One of the most obvious downsides is how insanely competitive it is. It's a desirable specialty, but a small specialty with a limited number of residency positions. For this reason, many applicants find it necessary to take several years off during medical school to bolster their application with dermatology research to improve their chances. You may find the field often misunderstood. Those who don't fully understand and appreciate the specialty may dismiss your profession as being only skin deep. And typical surgeons often won't consider your work real surgery even if you specialize in Mohs. The fast-paced nature of clinic is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's exciting and engaging, but on the other hand, it may not suit all personalities, particularly if you want to spend more time with a patient. How can you decide if dermatology is a good fit for you? If you love the pathologies related to skin, enjoy working in clinic at a fast pace, like procedures but not so much to be surgical, and are willing to be a self-directed learner to tackle the amount of independent study that is required to be successful, then dermatology may be worth considering. And finally, dermatology is one of the most competitive specialties, so you'll need to be willing to put in the time and effort to become a top student. That translates to more than just high board scores, but also playing the research game, being a leader, and acing your clinical rotations. And who better to learn from and be mentored by than dermatologists themselves? Big shout out to the dermatologists at Med School Insiders that helped me in the creation of this video. If you need help acing your MCAT, USMLE, or other exams, our tutors can maximize your test day performance. If you're applying to medical school or dermatology residency, our dermatologists can share the ins and outs of what it takes and how to navigate the highly competitive process most effectively. We've become the fastest growing company in the industry, and it's no surprise. Our customers love us because we're committed to delivering results, period. Learn more at MedSchoolInsiders.com. Thank you all so much for watching. What specialty do you want me to cover next? Leave a comment down below and make sure you're subscribed to vote in those upcoming polls. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button to keep the YouTube gods happy. Much love to you all and I will see you guys in that next one.